In this video, I'm going to go over how to make a very basic firework component, spolettes. Spolettes are used to time when shells are going to break in the sky. Now there are two critical things that are needed to make spolettes. You need good tubes, and these I picked up from PyroDirect. These are four inch by quarter inch ID spiral wound tubes. And you also need black powder. This is granulated black powder, but it could easily be in meal form. The benefit to using granulated powder is it pours more easily into the tube and does not kick up dust. Now the rammer I'll be using for these spolettes is a quarter inch zinc plated rod. Now this rod has a little groove cut into it right at the end of where it's going to sit at the top of the tubes. Now this groove is cut into the rod so that we can tell how deep the grain is getting as we ram the composition. Now to put the groove into this rod, I just took a normal pipe cutter and ran it around a few times. This put the groove in there, but it also built up a little bit of a lip. To get rid of that lip, I ran 100 grit sandpaper up and down the rod a few times. Now when ramming anything, it's important you use consistent increments of composition. Now to do that with these spolettes, I've made a little scoop out of a popsicle stick and a piece of the tube itself. I also have a little piece of an aluminum can on here to help funnel the black powder into the tube. Alright, so our spolettes are going to be made simply by ramming black powder into our tubes. Now what I'm going to use to ram these is just a small piece of wood. For ramming rockets or something you would use a large rawhide mallet but uh, for something as small as spolettes, you won't, don't want that kind of impact. So what I'm going to try to do with this is give consistent blows to each increment. Maybe four or five a piece, but always the same number to try to keep the same consistency in the density of the grain. So what I'll do to start this is just take one of our tubes and put it down on a solid surface. Here I have a steel plate. You could easily do this on a concrete slab as well. I'll then just take our scoop here and get one scoop of our black powder and go ahead and pour that right into our tube. Now for the first increment you have to keep the tube pressed down on the plate or the black powder will fall out of the end before it's compressed. Now with the black powder in the bottom under our ramrod here I'll just go ahead and take my bludgeoning object and give this a few solid hits. There it is. Pull this out and there's a nice solid surface on there. Alright, when it starts to look close to the two inch mark, what I'm going to do is just give it a measure and see where I'm at. Right now I'm just a hair below two inches so what I'm gonna do is maybe add one, one and a half more increments to this and then I'll stop here. Alright that puts me right about at two inches. Now it's time to take this outside and give it a burn well on video camera or with a stopwatch to determine what my burn rate per inch is. Now if you take your 2 inch spolettes burn rate and divide it in half, you'll end up with your burn rate per inch. You can then take your burn rate and use that to determine how deep to make the composition in your spolette for whatever particular timing purpose you need. And that's all there is to it to making a spolette. They can now be inserted inside the discs for your canister shells, such as this here. Now the benefit to using these spolettes rather than time fuse is now you have this long length of tube even though the timing could be very short. Having the long length of tube means the point of ignition inside your canister shell is going to be more towards the center, which is going to provide a more powerful and more even break. To finish off these spolettes just right, you can fill the empty portion of the tube with black match. This will provide a quick match type effect, which will give an even harder kick to your shells. You all may have noticed that in the last few videos I've been wearing some pyro related shirts. All of these shirts are of my own design, and I am now offering them for sale in a link below in the video description. I would definitely appreciate it if you guys went and checked those shirts out. 
And hey, if you're looking for a way to support my videos, buying one of those shirts is a great way to do it, and you get some good pyro style while you're at it.